Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So I've received another box full of inspiration from one of my lovely, precious dolls, Laura Wiles. Laura has been the one who's always encouraged me to be safe and wear my mask and wear gloves and be cautious with solvents and things. And to receive a box like this full of all these lovely things for the wedding and for the dolls, it really means so much, Laura. I absolutely love those flowers. Those are some of my favorite type of flowers. And she sent me tools that would be perfect for helping me in making Marguerite's wedding veil. This is great, Laura. And then she sent me all types of lovely fabrics, which so many of them will be great for the children. I can make towels and blankets and other things are going to be needed as the community grows and as I begin the next house. This is just absolutely great, Laura. You have no, no idea. And when I saw the little blue and white check, I was so tickled because I used to have fabric like that that I had made Aunt Bess's original dress out of. So to get some more in that tiny scale is absolutely perfect. And I truly appreciate the solid tones in the deeper, darker fabrics because I think they'll be perfect for making things for the men. And when I saw these little rugs, I couldn't believe it. Did you make these, Laura? These are adorable. And they're so nice. They're nice and firm. I, can, I love that you back them so they won't curl up. But these are really, really nice. I really appreciate this, Laura. Thank you so much. And I have so many dolls to dress, so some extra lace trim is always right on time. Laura, I truly appreciate you taking the time and just thinking of me. And I was so amused when I saw this little box and I saw in the card where you said that I shouldn't open it because it was a gift for the wedding, but that it shouldn't be opened. So when I get everything arranged at the wedding reception, I'll set it among the other boxes and gifts that should not be opened. And I was truly tickled to see these two reels of this really small ribbon in lavender and white. Those are so perfect. But I truly stopped in my tracks when I saw this black ribbon with the tiny flowers. For some reason, this fabric or ribbon reminds me of the story of the little girl named Heidi. Laura, this box was absolutely wonderful and I'm so excited because you dolls have been so kind and generous to me, giving me things that I'm going to need to prepare for the wedding things Marguerite will need on her honeymoon. As a matter of fact, let's see what's happening with Marguerite. So Saadi's returning from his trip. He's been gone about five days. He had to pass over a couple towns, mostly on foot, to get over to the county to apply for the marriage license. Saadi wanted to be proactive and go ahead and apply for the license so that by the time Marguerite was ready and had made up her mind that the marriage license would already have been issued. When he returned to the rooming house, things were pretty quiet. When he entered the music room, he immediately greeted Miss Edna and Miss Fountain, who were, as usual, tending to the babies. After he greeted them, he quickly asked them if they had seen Marguerite. When they said no, he immediately dropped his luggage and went to check the next room. When he entered the parlor, he found Aunt Evelyn in there alone, as usual, tending to another baby. When he asked her about Marguerite, she said she hadn't seen her at all today. At this point, Sadi was feeling pretty sad because all he could think about the whole time he was gone was returning to see her beautiful face. He began to think about when he first came to the rooming house and how he came there looking for work and to start a new life, but he never imagined falling in love. He remembered watching Albert and Violet when he first met them, and he wondered what it would be to be in love like they were. He was even thinking about how nicely things were working out between Pop and Miss Betty, but he considered maybe things were different because they were older. But in spite of all the memories, all he was concerned about was laying eyes on Marguerite. He checked the hallway. She wasn't there. Checked the laundry room where they had had their first secret kiss. She wasn't there either. He went through the pantry and up the stairs to the back hallway and remembered how they had got caught up there talking alone and got scolded by Elbert. Sadi ran back down the stairs to check the kitchen. Only Isabel and Alvarez were in the kitchen. In his haste to see Marguerite, he had almost forgotten his manners and quickly removed his hat and asked them if they had seen Marguerite. They encouraged him to relax and that she had gone to town with the other women to shop for food. Isabel warned him that it would be a while because they had just left. She advised them that there was some lunch left over 
and that she would warm him up a plate and he could eat in the dining room with Grandpa and Uncle Benny. After that, Sadi went straight to his room, totally forgetting about his luggage down in the music room, and he threw his hat on the bed. He was really glad that he had come up to his room and looked at himself in the mirror. He realized he hadn't shaved in a couple of days and haste to try to return home. He really needed to get himself together before he saw Marguerite to greet her. He decided to go ahead and shave, clean up, and change his clothes before the ladies got back. Meanwhile, on the third floor, Claude was showing the younger boys that he had a deck of cards. He wasn't supposed to have them because they were associated with gambling. He couldn't resist trying to impress them. He made the younger boys promise that they didn't tell anyone he had the cards or they'd never be able to play with him in his room anymore. Meanwhile, on the second floor in the girls' room, little Tracy was trying to impress the younger girls about her and Harper being asked to assist with the birth of the new babies. The younger girls were very excited to hear about the little babies, but they really didn't understand about the process of babies being born. And although Tracy was talking big, she didn't know either. Meanwhile, up in the room that was slated to be prepared for Sadie and Marguerite, Albert and Uncle Barley were trying to determine who gets which crib. Big Daddy and Sterling were laughing really hard, saying that the way things are going around here, we might need a room for only cribs. But by the time they got through laughing, they had a plan for how to prepare for the new babies. After lunch, Aunt Evelyn joined her husband and Uncle Benny for iced tea and dessert. Sadi never made it back downstairs for lunch. After Sadi shaved and bathed, he was tired. He sat on the bed and fell asleep. About two hours later, the ladies returned from the marketplace with all the things they had to stock the kitchen and start cooking for the new week. And there was a suitcase sitting in the doorway of the music room. They had not been expecting new guests, so they knew that it must have been Sadi's bag. Marguerite immediately threw down her grocery bag and ran to look for him. When Elbert realized the women were back, he ran to knock on the door to let Sadi know that she was back. Marguerite said hello to everyone and continued to run. She ran so fast, she ran right past her father. Everyone gasped. <gasps> her father insisted that she stop running. It was not customary or ladylike for a woman to run to greet a man. Marguerite kept running. Elbert continued to beat on Sadi's door until he woke up. Sadi was like, what's going on? He said, she's here. Marguerite is here. Sadi ran out of the room, pushed past Albert and down the stairs to greet Marguerite. Marva and Sterling were expressing their frustration and disappointment with Marguerite running past her father to greet Sadi. Just then, Miss Maisie said, I've had enough of both of you all. With all your suspicions and traditions and regulations and rules, you've interfered enough. Sometimes love is not traditional. Miss Maisie sent Lillian Aunt Vera and Big Ma to go check on the young couple. Lillian quietly peered through the curtain of the laundry room. Aunt Vera and Big Ma went around the back through the kitchen door to watch through the pantry. That worked out well because Big Ma had two baskets of fish that she didn't want to carry through the house. As the unofficial chaperones looked on, Sadie and Marguerite embraced and hugged each other really, really tight. Marguerite began to cry, and Sadi began to kiss her tears away. He promised to never leave her again, and if he ever left, he would take her with him. She told him that although she was nervous, she missed him so much and was miserable while he was away. She told him she never wanted to be away from him again. She said, I know now that I love you, and I'm ready to get married. He told her that he loved her too, and he was really glad because he had applied for their license and that it would be there in a doll month.